listening to Unravel with Natalie Denise. Cool, glitch, muchachos y muchachas, what's going on? You know, we're just trying to figure these little things out. Guys, <laughs> it's just, everything's just going crazy, Nick. Everything's just crazy right now. Oh, gosh. I know, but you're making it work. You made it work. Is this I the did. first time you've done that on StreamYard? No, um, I, I, I actually, yes, I think yesterday was like my first, my first go around with StreamYard, but you know what, we're going to get through it and I'm going to, I'm going to figure it out. I did actually do a test stream with my, my followers and they were like, it looks great. It looks great. But I just got to work on the transitions a little better. Yeah. But anyway. Looks really good. I like what you did with you. the logo and just that music. I thought you were going to drop down some rhymes. I thought you were going to start rapping. Right. Da, da, da. Oh, it's so God. like serene. But guys, uh, I know we're early, 8.30. I announced 9 o'clock. That's when we're going to have our guest uh, come on. And, um, you know, we're going to talk through some. Uh, first off, I'm going to introduce my my guest. This is Nick Alvier. You guys, if you've been following me for a long time, you probably know who he is because we both started around the same time, you know, with our, our documentaries and such until big tech did its thing. But Nick, how mm -hmm. are you doing? Oh man, I'm so tired. I probably look it. I've been working so much. Uh, I'm working on Pervy with Alec Baldwin. <gasps> oh yeah. When I make a movie too, it's kind of like, uh, this is how it used to be. I'd, I'd rent an Airbnb and then yeah. I would uh, just keep myself in there, not answer right. the phone for about two or three days and be done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now there's so much going on with Good Line TV and building Roku a website and all this other stuff um, that, it, you know, it gets a little difficult. But over the last three days, I've been able to do it again, which is really fun. Yeah, yeah. So I actually had a lot of new people follow me yesterday because they're so interested in the whole Travis Scott ordeal at Astroworld. So for those and look, it's it's actually great because people are starting to wake up and, you know, yeah. where they weren't, they weren't there last year. Yeah. So it's they've got the perfect people. They were in the right company with, you know, with the brother and the sister here. So go ahead and give give an intro. Who are you? What are you doing here? What do you do? All right. You know what? Let me give you a, a good intro into my journey that uh, I've shared the story with a lot of folks, but I'll make it I'll make it condensed because it's a long one. But it starts uh, before the pandemic hit. Um, are we allowed to say that word anymore? Or, there's some words we can't say. I, think you could say, I, I say plantpocalypse. I mean, plantpocalypse before yeah. it hit the plantpocalypse. It was about six months before I had driven home drunk. And what my plan was, was to take an Uber, but drunk me later on, I saw canceled it and decided to drive home myself. And mm. that was like a 40 minute drive from yeah. SB Ventura in California. And on the way, I must have fallen asleep. That That's, this is my, my theory. Because mm -hmm. I ended up hitting two guardrails on oh the coast. Uh, the, it's basically PCH. Um, so I, I end up waking up at home. And my ex or my wife, who was now my ex at the time, she said, uh, you totaled the car. I said, no way. So uh, I, I rush up. I look out the window and the car's there parked perfectly, but it's totaled on left oh, and right. It's just guardrail. It's like dented. It's actually uh -huh. right. It's tattooed on me right here. Oh, my gosh. Oh, you tattooed your car on it. All right. I did. I know getting the tattoo was embarrassing. The tattoo artist was like, are you sure you want to put a Prius on you? <laughs> And, and I'll tell you why I put okay. it on because okay. uh, the work, the job I had at that time had a shuttle. So it would take me up to, to my job in a shuttle. And just so happened a few days in, uh, there was an accident on the freeway. So it was slower and I could actually pick up where I hit the guardrails. Yeah. And when I found the location that I hit, just a foot behind was no guardrail. So I realized that if I had just had turned sooner, I would have gone off that cliff, broke my neck, probably died. In that realization is when everything changed for me. And this is something that I challenge people to try and get to without having a near-death experience. But what I realized was, oh, my God, I would have died. My daughter yeah. would have grown up without a father. Mm -hmm. And and then deep down was also, but you didn't do shit that you thought you were going to do when you were yeah. a kid. When you were seven, yeah. you knew you are going to be a film director. You knew you were going to be a musician. And it made me cry and realize I need to, I need to hustle because yeah. I could die any day. Yeah. 
So then uh, I knew right then and there I would start a production company. I didn't know the name, but it was going to be for music videos and real estate to make income. And yeah. the first meeting was at this bar called The Good Lion in Santa Barbara. And I went to the bathroom in there and they had this typewriter and it was an Ernest, Hem Ernest Hemingway poem, short story about a lion with wings. It was called The Good Lion. Mm -hmm. It reminded me of a story I'd written. So because of that, in that moment, I knew Good Lion Films. I came out yeah. and I told my friends it's Good Lion Films. So uh, fast forward a little, I'm so vocal about my love and support for Trump that it got me fired from my job. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I was so pissed that it was a fusion of being pissed and then watching Fall of the Cabal and also making a bunch of music videos for my, for my songs that I make, that I produce. Yeah. And it created this desire, this massive, ah, I knew what I was going to do. I was going to make documentaries to wake up people like my neighbor who's so asleep. That's yeah. how I with all that anger. And, and then I started making movies. And that's when I like surfed the wave, the last wave of YouTube is what I call it. It was from March onward till October 15th when they nuked us all. And uh, it, was a fun, it was a fun ride from 52 subscribers to 60,000 in six months, making a movie every other week. Some of them short. And as, as I kept going, they got longer. And you can watch all these at goodlion.tv. The Purviewood series is what really escalated the yeah, whole. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. So uh, it just so happened, though, on, on the journey, I kept on diving into uh, my movies. So like Purviewood 5, I highlight a pedophile who I thought was a friend who was a podcast guest. Yeah. And then going to his house and finding out, oh, my God, this guy's a pedophile. That's a whole nother story. I tell that on a lot of podcasts. But yeah. fast forward again, and I'm getting this massive pull to go to the cap, not to the Capitol, but to DC for Trump's last rally, basically. Yeah, yeah. This Day six. Yeah. So I go on the fifth, I check out DC and, and it was fun. It was really great. And then January 6th, the whole shenanigans went down. Mm -hmm. And I was, I, I think it was around 2 30, they have me listed as going into the Capitol. And because I was making Purview with Nine, Volume One, which is now done. Uh, I filmed the whole thing. I filmed myself struggling on the ground, going under the bleachers. I filmed myself um, getting tear gas bombs left and right. Yeah. I, I got shot in both thighs with uh, rubber bullets. Yikes. Turn around and the doors were open and I go in. And I ended up doing something up there that didn't get me in trouble with the law. Yeah. But it went viral. I smoked some weed up in the Capitol, whatever, everyone, there's a lot of people smoking weed there that day, but just so happened, Daily Caller filmed me and it got 7 million views and oh. my brother and my sister teamed up and told the FBI my name. Uh. They found me a month later, I went to jail for 45 days and I was fly on the wall. I learned so much when I was in there and uh, even started a charity, made a lot of friends. It was 30 days in Virginia, and then they transferred me to D.C. where I was with the Patriots, who are now still in jail. Yes. And I've been going around talking for them. Um, Jonathan Mellis is one really beautiful man I met there, and we're, we're in communication through his girlfriend, and there's apps that we can use to actually communicate with them. Well, good. So, so what I'm doing now is adopt a Patriot with a, with a friend, Annie. And what that's about is we're going to create a – Right, right. It's going to be a section on the goodlion.tv website that instructs you how to do it. It's, it's simple. It's actually really simple. It's, there's a website called gettingout.com and we'll give you the um, inmate numbers to each of the Patriots so that you could adopt one for the holidays and maybe even keep a relationship while they're still in there. It's that kind of thing really helps them out. And um, yeah, look, look out for that. And so now I get out of the jail for 45 days, Trump 45 First jail I was in there was actually on Godwin Street. All mm -hmm. these little tiny miracles reminded me that, A, I'd be okay, and then B, I would be out. And I got out. It's been seven months with an ankle monitor on. And the first day I got out, I went and got a phone, and I checked my Gmail. So mm -hmm. weird holding a phone after not having one for 45 days. Yeah. And I had a, an email from HBO. They wanted to do, They wanted to interview me for a documentary. For the Interesting. History. Yeah. I'm like, hey, did you guys know I just got out? Are you guys tracking me? And they said no. And uh, anyway, I ended up doing it. And the, sh the movie came out about three weeks ago. And they follow it. 
through everyone's eyes. So they gave everyone an opportunity to talk, especially me. And they did great. Brought up the children. They put it in there, which is awesome. And uh, yeah, ever since I've been going around talking on Real America's Voice, doing my thing, interviewing some people on my podcast. But mainly I'm just making movies now and I'm still going. I've created Good Line TV, which is like, it's like the Netflix of red pill documentaries. I split, love it. Yeah. yeah. Split into categories like spiritual, uh, wealth and health. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. then it's expanding. And that's, that's basically where I'm at now. And, uh, yeah, the last thing I just finished was a series called beginnings that shows the, the roots of Fauci and Gates. And, uh, now I'm working on with Alec Baldwin, which is going to be done in a couple of days. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And look, I cannot wait to get because, you know, we we both kind of started in the same space and I was doing that type of work. But let me tell you, you you know, this. The Chester Bennington and Chris Cornell story is a lot. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's so vast. It's so vast. Yeah. I remember when I started doing the purview with eight, which was basically all of fate. So, yeah. Chester Bennington, Chris Cornell, Anthony Bourdain. I threw yeah. in Avicii and Michael Jackson in there, but there's so much because I mean, for example, right now on Good Line TV, Alessandro he uh, he's co-producing Lion Disclosure with me, and in those he's he's putting out all of it because there's so many different parts that move around yeah. with different people like Kate Spade, and uh, and even those who who were killed that we don't even know about some Spanish stars like this whole web is complex yeah and it's nice to see that we're all kind of getting behind it yeah yeah it it, it is very complex i mean i got i spent an entire year in research and uh, one of my really good friends heavy metal yogi uh shout out to her you know she is a big uh, you know chester bennington fan and uh she was already researching and i was like she was giving me all these digs. I was like, Don't, do you you would just want to be like a co-writer or something? Because like, you know, a lot. And I think it would be very, you know, fruitful if you joined in on the on the project. She was like, yeah. So one year later and it's like, oh, my God, like I I don't even I don't even know. I'm like, wow, th- these are a lot of moving parts, a lot of people just a lot of activity and a lot of non-activity, like a lot of things that people d- didn't even like suspect. So um, yeah, man, I, I totally feel it. I'm like, you know, once, once this is complete, it's going to alleviate me to go back to what I used to do last year, which, you know, I'm looking a lot forward to because, you know, there's a lot to talk about out there. It's just, especially with so many people waking up now, you know, with the whole, Travis Scott thing um, that happened over the weekend, just kind of like a shell shock. Super. Yeah. There's a lot of people in there who, uh, who were there, who are now getting hip to what we've been saying for some time. Yeah. What we've been analyzing. And yeah, uh, that was, it's so dark researching this whole Travis Scott thing. The feeling I get is so dark. It is. Yeah. And so you had, did you have one or two yesterday? Was it yesterday? I had one yesterday. Yeah, I had one yesterday. Uh, and actually, two witnesses came on. And uh, the first one offered a lot of great insight because, you know, there. I don't think that there's a lot of, like, well-constructed maps of the actual concert area. There was one on Daily Mail, but it was like a little Play-Doh figure type three, three-dimensional thing. So you can really imagine it. But he, he came on with a little drawn map. He was like, okay, this is why we think that it it got crowded the way it did. So there was a lot of perspective, but that's the thing, Nick, like, why is it that it comes from witness accounts and not from, you know, the me, yeah. the me- it's just such a weird thing, you know, this Very eight weird. person body count. Why eight? And it's weird. Cause when you look at the, uh, it might be just a promotion for the concert, but they have like the hand like this. Right. Mm-hmm. And then they got the mountain and it looks like a moon or a, or a vortex, but in the eight, there are, uh, or in hand, there are eight of those eye pyramid things. 
Ew, I don't like that at all. Yeah, I know. There's so many weird videos too that I've been catching. One of them has this very strange, almost like a entity that jumps off of. I saw that. Yeah, what, it looked like an animal or some kind of creature. We'll see. And then another thing to that also is, um, you know, there were, I, I believe I caught very quickly, I believe I caught that there were people that were raging on the, uh, what was it? It was like a cop cart or it was like, it was supposed to be a medic cart, but uh -huh. it was a cop cart. And that, you know, there were people like that were raging. And the only thing that I could think of is like, the camera doesn't show it, but I'm like wondering, I wonder if one of those people like jumped off of the cart and into the crowd, maybe. That's what it could look like for sure. You know, you know I don't know. A friend showed me some, a really, a really trippy video. And what it is, it's graphene oxide being manipulated by sound by frequency. Ooh. And there's like a bowl, right? And the graphene is um, within it. And the bowl is catching uh, the sound. But the graphene is completely almost levitating and it's moving in so many shapes, but it's squished, right? Yeah. Everyone at this concert had to be, you know? Uh, yeah. So when you think about it, uh, mixed with what people have talked about. You mean? Yeah. That thing? Yeah. So what if that caused, what if, because there was one report of a very intense frequency, a sound that they heard. And maybe we can cross reference yeah. and ask the person who's coming on. Yeah. And, and if that's the case, are they testing out some kind of technology? And then the day before CERN finished years worth of of research and building on on their what do they call it? It's a wheel. It's a wheel that looks very much like a like a vortex. And they installed it. And had it ready to go. I don't know if they turned it on on the same day, but it was the day before that there's a video of this guy showing around at CERN. So I don't know, man. This stuff's all related. And when you think about like the social engineering institutions out there, like Tavis Stock, yeah. sounds a lot like Travis Scott. So there's a lot of weirdness that we could pick in and observe and. I'll totally make a movie, a pervy wood on on Travis Scott. I mean, there's plenty there. There's there's Gosh. moments where, where he's on a radio station talking about how when he's live, he, what he loves is how the people are giving all they've got. They're giving all their blood. And yeah. the host says, blood? What are you talking about, blood? I saw and, that. Yeah. yeah. It's like little tiny things here and there that lead to clues that, you know, uh, say a larger thing, larger sentence. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <sighs> Freaky. It, it's freaky. What's more freaky is the the, the non-transparency. You saw that actually I'm, I'm uploading a video to up, uh, YouTube as we speak, but um, maybe I shouldn't have said that because I don't want people to like leave this cast, but they were calling or uh, actually it was the, um, what is it called? Emergency protocols or something like that. Did you see that they, they, instructed the staff members of Astroworld Festival to call the deceased Smurfs. What the fuck? Yeah. Okay, let me I, I gotta I gotta bring this up because uh this is I mean the wildest upon wilds and actually I think I retweeted it. By the way, Antifa found me on Twitter and they are obsessed with me. Antifa Miami loves me for whatever freaking reason. I'm like, do you guys want me to move to Miami or something? Like, what is it about me that you're... Why are you so obsessed with me, Antifa? <laughs> Antifa is gnarly. Antifa is gnarly. Yeah, they oh, need to take a trip. They, yeah, they're, they're... No, no. They're perfectly they're... projecting. They're, they're the like perfect representative of what it's like to project. And they're unconscious. They can't really see... What they hate is what they are. It's yeah. phenomenal. It's a great psychological thing to really, it's, it's shitty, but it's also kind of a wonder, amazing. It's like, wow, you guys are so passionate about this thing that you actually are. You are, yeah. You are this person. You understand. <laughs> they are the fattest and they're anti it. <laughs> Man. Oh my gosh, dude. Okay, let me see. I've got the window. Let's get it. It's right here. 
Oh, Brianna's in the house. What's up, Brianna? She's she's the writer of uh, the beginning series. Hey, Brianna. Nice to meet you. Okay. So, uh, what, okay. So I just retweeted this here. What the hell is this? Is what <laughs> I say. Astroworld staff instructed to refer to dead concert goers as Smurfs according to event plan. And this I'm actually is real. <sighs> this, this is, is real. Crazy. I'm going to show you. And actually, guess who reported this uh, initially? Who? CNN. Oh, shit. So you know it's real when CNN <laughs> reports. It's facts. It's facts. <laughs> oh, look oh. at the pedophile. He's got the astro pedophilia kind of thing happening. Is that? I, I thought that, that there was like a squ round square target thing. Yeah. I don't know. It's it almost like, like a, his, it's like his vortex that he's obsessed with. Like it looks he, like a vortex. He's obsessed um, with this vortex wheel thing. Yeah. A lot Who of gives him this much power? Like, how did he get popular? I don't even get it. I I have no idea. Astro World. Staff, Astro World staff instructed to refer to dead concert goers as Smurfs according to an event plan. Astro World staff were instructed to refer to dead concert goers as Smurfs, according to a 56-page security and emergency medical response plan obtained by CNN. I'm actually going to try to open that up. Yeah, so that is uh, mm -hmm. uh, the wide range. Is <laughs> so it that crazy? Uh, it, it was obtained by CNN and authored by Austin, Texas-based concert promoter Scoremore. The wide-ranging document outlines contingencies, instructions for staff responding to different situations at this festival, which ended uh, Friday night in the death of eight. Well, uh, they say a, but so I'm going to fast forward. You guys see the document for yourself. It's a real thing, you know, index, even a map of the a very rare map that we haven't seen before. Oh, but if we scroll shit. all the way down to the 24th page, 24th page, right over here, traumatic injury resulting in death. Notify event control of sp suspected deceased victim utilizing the code SMURF. Whoa. Use the cold, uh, the term dead. Oh, I'm sorry. Do not never use the term dead or deceased over the radio, meaning the ksh, SMURF. Ksh, SMURF. Uh, why SMURF? There's got to be something. Why that? Why you, that? You need a gematria check on Smurf. Anybody out there? <laughs> uh, it's um, it's insanity. Like, why? Why are we here? Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. That, I mean, uh, the other thing I can I can probably like maybe think of is that maybe um, they don't want to alert other people they don't want to cause panic like just plain i hate the word devil's advocate but like that's the only other right. way i could see it right same yeah not to alert anybody who's listening to loud music anyway who's i don't know if anyone's gonna hear that but yeah yeah i mean it it's just insanity to me i i, I don't know i don't know the, the the term smurf is just it's too eerie um yeah i know what's uh i kind of freaked out the most when i saw the upside down cross and then i saw these people walking on top of that big old vortex thingy really? people walking on top of it when 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 shit was hitting the fan also it's there's such a discrepancy between eight deaths and then from everyone who was there said it was like crazy amount said it was way more than eight well that's what i'm saying like you know these uh, people are people are like coming out with testimony and which is you know let me check on my my witness here but um that's what's so confusing about all this you, even like just just the videos you you've seen yourself i mean there have been so many people that look visibly unconscious at least at the very least and you know something that i i keep reiterating back to is um nurse madeline eskin i don't know if you've seen her testimony have you i might have she's a blonde the blonde lady no she actually has black hair she's coming okay. out 
and talking um, about her unconscious episode, she actually went unconscious. She uh, got crowd surfed. And uh, what is here? She got crowd surfed uh, her her unconscious body to the medic area. And um, when she woke up, because she was unconscious, she got surfed to the the uh, medic area. She was unconscious, woke up and saw a bunch of bodies around her. And she was like, what the heck? Like, what's going on? Oh, and man. as she assessed the area, she was like, nobody like check the pulse. Like nobody's checking the yeah. pulse. And so she checked the pulse and there were like two people without pulses. Wow. So, yeah. you know, like. Right. Yeah. And people around didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. She said some people were doing CPR, but didn't even know what they were doing. And they were doing it on people with a pulse. So Dang. that's the thing. Are those the people, are the people without the pulse, are those the ones that didn't, oh. you know, that didn't, that didn't make it? So we yeah. got Tabitha on the stream and she's going to join us, guys. So let's go ahead and bring her on. Tabitha, how are you doing? Oh, Tabitha. Hi, I'm I'm fine. <laughs> how are y'all? Doing well. Very curious about what you have to say and you know your experience at Astro World. And before I do, guys, for those of you on stream, please grab this link, share it, drop it in your Facebook groups, drop it in your Telegram groups, drop it in your Discords, share it to your stories. Be sure because there's not a lot of people talking about this and we're just trying to make sense of everything. So mm -hmm. Tabitha, we surely appreciate your, your testimony here. Thank you so much for coming on to Unravel. I'm joined with uh, Nick. So thank you. It's nothing, you know, it's no problem. It's just trying to get as much information about, you know, our experiences out there because there's yeah. a lot of misinformation. And like I've seen lately that everybody wants to put like their two cents and they weren't really there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, especially like with the satanic cults conspiracies, I sure. personally think that that's really insensitive, like ah. to the victims and everything, because they're chalking it all up to yeah. conspiracies when it was really just poor management. And like, I've seen it firsthand starting from when I got there to like the end of it, it was just a boiling point. like just how the festival was ran. Yeah. Everything that happened was kind of the inevitable. Mm, a boiling just... point. Yeah, I heard the concert they did before, the management was a big complaint uh, because of how poor they did. Is that video I saw of during the daytime of people going over fences, is that from Astroworld's event that you were at? Yeah, because they had originally broken. Okay, so like the festival was supposed to start at 1 p.m., right? Mm -hmm. And I went to the first one. This wasn't my first Astro uh, festival. And they had broken the fence, you know, at previous Astro festivals. So I decided to go there earlier. And like I said, the festival started at 1 p.m. And they usually don't let you in until a little bit after one or a little bit after the festival starts. But they had broken the fences at 7 a.m. because people were camping there since 4. So they decided, I guess, like to not let that happen again and it still happened again to just like let the people in so when i got there at 10 they let us in and i know they were like saying that they're like making COVID like a priority like with you either had to be vaccinated or get tested and there was like on-site testing they didn't um, check it they didn't check it don't um, let nobody like tell y'all otherwise i had my COVID vaccine card out and they were like looking at me like crazy and they're like they just gave me a bracelet and was just like here just here, like get out of their face, basically. What? Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. And so when I went to the security checkpoint to actually like scan my bracelet in and to actually enter the festival and um, to get my bag checked, I know like the website was saying that they were making a big deal about clear bags. They weren't making a big deal about it. They let anybody what? in. Yes. Like, I walked in and I was already taken out from my bag so that way it could be checked. And they they didn't even open it or anything. If I wanted to put whatever I wanted in there, 
they would have let me got it like whatever I wanted in there. She oh. looked at my bag and she didn't even open it. She didn't even flip it. She was just like, go ahead. My husband accidentally left his keys in his pocket. He beat. They told him it's fine. Just come. They didn't even pat him down. And I was hearing from other people that even though they beeped through the metal detectors, they were just like letting them come through. They weren't checking them. They were letting people like regular bags come through. They weren't checking their bags. It was just like, like I said, like we seen the negligence starting from when we first got there. And we went to the first merch booth line, right? And like, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a Travis Scott festival. Everybody wants his merch. If y'all don't know his shirts and stuff, they resell at high value. So we just wanted to get something for us, not to sell it, just like, just something to like, remember the festival by. And I noticed that HPD was there. Like they're mounted on their horses. And then there were some like, just, Mm. you know, there because apparently when they broke the fences at 7 a.m., right a little bit before we got there too, they were fighting in the crowds. They were fighting security. Some people were jumping into the merch booths. They were trying to steal some of the merch. Uh, (laughs) So they had, yeah, they were getting real crazy. So like by the time that I had got in there, they kind of, they closed down the merch line, but they didn't tell nobody. They just stopped all sales. So the way that the rails were, were kind of like very unorganized. So people were just hopping the rails, moving them or whatever. And that's basically what we did because we didn't know where to go. So it was just a cluster of just people together, separated by the little rails that they had. And then I noticed on the other side, I actually have a video of it. They're starting to throw the rails like at people. They're starting to just throw them. Whoa. And the cops were just looking at them and they weren't doing a thing. I and heard that yesterday, Tabitha, there was another witness account that came to talk to me. And he said that at the very beginning that there were people that were being rowdy at the beginning, that there was already a woman with broken leg bones and stuff like yeah, that. It could happen. Yeah, they were really like the crowd itself. Like. The whole vibe was off. And like I said, like, I don't know if it's because he oversold the tickets. I'm more than sure. Plus overselling the venue and having all those people rush in. And also too, I strongly believe that he should have had an age limit because there's the way that this crowd was, it was wild. It was wild. And you've so been to a few of them. So you, you could really yeah, say that this yeah. was it. Okay. And like I, the first, Astro that I attended, it was really disorganized as well, but I chalked it up to it being the first one, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like, I was in the pit right next to the stage in the first one, and I had no problems getting out. Like, I had, I have fell, and someone had picked me up, and they're like, Yo, you need to get out of here. And so I was like, Yeah, you're right. Like, this isn't for me. And they actually like helped me, they made a pass for me. Like, it was easy to get out of the first one. And like the way also too, they had the setup of the stage from the first one and the second one to this one, it was like a recipe for disaster because the, first of all, the mud was really muddy. There is no way to like have grip. They didn't put sand or anything for traction and the tiles that they put like in right into, I don't know if y'all seen the layout of the stage, but it was like kind of like a box. It was like boxed in. I saw that. With the railing. I saw that and I thought that could have been, I'm a conspiracy minded individual. And I just thought that's a very strategic way to cram people in together. Yeah. I mean, because like I said, people, they want to go see Travis and you have like, they're saying it was 50 K people. Ain't no way. There was like way more people there. So I'll combine that with like everybody wanting to push in that one small spot. And then the type of tile they had on the floor, which was like a foam wet it was like a slippery kind of tile yeah like i said it was just and then by the end of the night i know for a fact that half of security had quit (laughs) most of the security that whoa yeah because like like i said the crowd was rough like security was already getting punched when we were at that merch line like i said they jumped security like you're only getting paid for these two days and they were it wasn't like they had it hired an experienced security team. This security team was like regular, regular people like me and you. And they just threw them on a vest and they told them that you have to fend for yourselves. Like 
a lot of people that worked for the venue, I know for a fact, they didn't know what to do. I was talking to a couple of carnival workers who were there, you know, that were hired for the event. And they were like saying that, yeah, like fights were breaking out left and right. One person brought in a taser. They were tasing people. One of the carnival workers had to quit because her boyfriend who was working at security they oh. ended up getting jumped and stabbed by the um, thrill oh. state. Whoa. This was just like a bad vibe all around from the gate. Straight, oh. out, from like, straight out the gate. Yeah. Like there was, it was just chaos like all around. How okay, did you feel then, personally? Like, you know, entering yeah. into just a little shift in your vibe? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I felt the negativity. And I was like, okay, well, I basically felt like I was kind of like fending for me. And, I went with my husband. So it was like, basically, we had to fend for ourselves. Because like I said, like the way that the security team was already, they're very inexperienced. And honestly, like, I'm pretty sure they didn't want to put up with anything. Since they're only hired for like two days for $500. And they're getting like jumped by like, kids basically like i could understand why they're like basically so it was like we felt the vibe and we ended up finding like another merch booth on the other lot on the other side of the carnival but we didn't have maps they didn't distribute maps for anyone to know what was what so we basically had to find it for ourselves luckily like the merch booth wasn't wild or anything and we were able to get what we wanted like quick easy yeah but we were i want to say this like they were promising free water right and like i said like a travis scott's fan base is mostly kids like high schoolers mm -hmm. or college kids and you know sometimes they're on their last dollar so if they can't get something to drink from the food trucks at least they have these free water booths right yeah but they only had one for 50,000 people and it wasn't working. Oh no, no. And people were <gasps> yeah. on drugs and, oh God. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not. Whoa, yeah. that is it, a lot of great new information. And that really does paint a lot of perspective about what had happened because, you know, I'm just kind of like, you know, I'm an analytical brain. So I'm like, okay, first of all, they're letting people through the security check, not checking anybody. So basically you can go, come over with whatever you have, tasers, you know, razors, anything you want. And then, you know, so that's already a failure of management, right? So they're oh, yeah. already heavily liable for not checking for that. So it just makes me wonder because one thing I think a lot of people can agree with is that there's some, there, there's a lot of, um, conspiracies that are being touted on both sides either it's you know on the media side mm -hmm. or on the you know people who weren't their side mm -hmm. and the media is touting this theory that there was some crazy injector going around and and do you know fit, right. yeah injecting, like, people, injecting with people with drugs yeah but it makes me wonder if that was a way to keep them not lie you know not liable for stuff oh, like okay. that you know what yeah, i mean like, like like i said like it's a festival people are gonna like bring in stuff regardless but yeah. it was so easy this year that that's why more than usual was able to be brought in. So mix doing drugs with drinking all day. Cause like I've seen people started drinking at 11 AM. They don't have no free water. Like they're not hydrating and also too, they're not eating because some of the, the way that the food trucks were like placed, the food trucks, like one part was by the stage where it was being used all, all day. And uh -huh. I don't even think people knew about the other food trucks way on the other side of the festival, because like I said, we weren't given maps. Like, <gasps> so I don't think anybody knew about those food trucks on the other side. Damn. <sighs> Stephanie brings up a good point. How did this concert even get clearance is insane. It's uh, honestly, they know people. They know yeah. people. Let me show you something. Uh, actually, you, I kept this little drawing from yesterday, uh, Tabitha, one of, one of my viewers, um, or my my witness, one of my concert witnesses, attendees, his name is Ricky. He, he drew this little map. I love this map. So <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad indeed. But that's why, though, that like, but that 
That's uh, peculiar, uh, though, that they wouldn't they wouldn't dr- give a map of like this whole thing. Like that's just crazy to me that they would have a whole a whole festival a whole concert and they wouldn't give anybody a map and then i'll even share this one right here be right back i'm using the restroom okay go ahead um so oops let me take this off there we go there's another map right here you know this is um and actually uh, tabitha we we learned about some news about their protocols but this is a a map that has uh, has been shared very recently. CNN ap- actually obtained this, uh, so it kind of you know ki- it kind of goes a little compared to. It, 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 well, I mean, this is more like you know homemade, but you know, it gives us a little bit more of an idea of why things were so compact. Yeah. And something that was brought up yesterday, you know, it being that the si- side stage was on the very left. And then obviously that little cross looking thing, I'm going to imagine it being the main stage for Travis, you know, you see this like really little, I guess, alleyway right here where it's like, it, it kind of looks like that would be a good cause for people to get trapped along with like that cross sort of stage, like Nick mentioned. Yeah, would you well, because like concur? that part right there uh-huh. was... I don't know if you could see it, but like uh, right directly across from the, I guess that's the cross for the medical tent. Ah. It was a tree and that part was mainly open. It was just that part right there that was concrete. But the other parts, it was like mainly open. So it was easy to walk across mainly, but nobody really wanted to do that because the, like I said, the lawn was very like muddy. Like people mm-hmm. were falling all day too because of how like slippery it was. So I'm pretty sure that's also why people wanted to be kind of closer to the stage. Cause like I said, they it was either concrete kind of closer to the sound stage, but like in the pits, it was still that foam. So I guess they knew in their mind, they were like, okay, at least like I'm on this firm planet ground instead of in the mud where it's slipping. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, Tabitha, do you do you know about how Satanists use an upside down cross to to kind of to show the public that they are Satanist? And the reason why some conspiracies have led in that direction is because the stage from a bird's eye looks like an upside down cross entering that vortex. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it was just coincidence that it was just an upside down cross, but <laughs> it might be. But you know, there's some stuff that goes deep down in that rabbit hole. But yeah, you know, it could be coincidence too. You never know. So, Tabitha, something that is very curious that you know, again, people are. I, I agree. Like people are kind of taking. Uh, we can't really make sense of it because I. Oh, number one, I. I'm not a big fan of the the mainstream media, right? Because I, I, they don't mm-hmm. necessarily tell the entire truth. They're not giving us full transparency. What what sort of intensifying moment was it for you did you stay throughout the entire concert did you see oh, yeah. like tragedies say, like yeah like i said like this was a boiling point from like i said from the beginning and i noticed the crowd was getting rowdier with um don tolliver and we noticed um i guess that's when like a lot of the drugs are kicking in too for some people mm. and like a lot of people already reached where they wanted to reach with the drinking so I guess that's why, like, the crowd was getting rowdier. Um, I know that's when a lot of fights started breaking out. Mm. And I know a lot of people said that they were getting trapped closer to the stage with Don Tolliver. We did see a, a kid get carted to the medical tent at his set. And I also seen some kids sneak in a fire extinguisher. Oh, what the monkeys? <laughs> Yeah, and I remember telling my husband, I was like, how the hell did this kid get a fire extinguisher? Oh, like, my gosh. Whoa, and I think in some of the videos, you see, like, a white foam, and that was him, like, with the extinguisher. Wow. And, yeah, and, like, when Lil Baby came on, because I that's when, like, I, I guess, like, the big, quote-unquote, like, bigger stars were coming on, because, you know, it was getting closer to the end of the festival. Like, that's when we started seeing, like, like I said, the crowd getting rougher and rougher. And by the time that SZA came on, because, mm-hmm. you know, her music's more calm, mm-hmm. uh, we noticed 
that her set was kind of getting emptied out and everybody who was waiting to merch, everybody who was waiting for Travis and also too, I was passing the stage all day and we were seeing kids like not in their sober state of mind. I'm saying kids cause like I'm, I'm kind of like up there in age, but they could have been like young adults. <laughs> yeah. But, I- like I'm seeing like people and not in their sober state of mind staying by the rails. I remember during, I think it was Roddy Rich set, we seen a girl in pink like just sprawled out by the tree and like her friends were trying to fan her. And I was like, okay, when I seen that, I was like, okay, yeah, it's it's probably gonna be bad. And when Travis, when we left the SZA set, we stayed for her whole set. And I wanted to kind of be not as close to um, the crowds because like I said, like I was observing it all day. I, I wasn't drinking or doing anything. So I was like, okay, like I can't keep up with this crowd. I could see how rowdy they are. I'm not gonna put myself in like that situation because I know like I probably would not have made it out. So I got like a good spot in the middle by the sound by the uh what's it called the projectors or the screens like the- right mm-hmm. behind the apple i didn't know there were apple music cameras oh. and when like he was late for his show because metro booming had came on and they were trying to like get people to go over there and they had like a they had zoomed in on this chick who was like out of her mind out of her mind that poor girl and she was like stuck on the rail and i don't know if like you've seen it on tiktok or whatever but she was like out of her mind that poor girl and while we're waiting for travis like i said he was like 30 minutes late there's people walking around like trying to sell stuff um somebody approached us if we wanted to buy anything and we're like you know obviously no and right when um the countdown started closer to like five minutes we noticed the couple in front of us started snorting some stuff so we're like yeah it's about it's really about to go down and then the couple behind us that girl was out of there she was out of there by the end of the concert she wasn't even like her her boyfriend had to like pick her up because she was like unconscious by the end of the night. Like when the countdown got to like five seconds, that's when it kind of started getting bad. Like Uh with the crowd, we were like getting enclosed kind of. Yeah. And like I said, like there was no way, I don't know, like there was just so many people. I don't think that was an accurate count because there's just so many people. And as soon as the beat dropped, you just feel the crowd going like, like it just went, like it all caved in, right? And they're saying like the first two minutes was the worst. I believe it because of how crazy this crowd was. And like, we were able to like take a couple of steps back and like form like a little pocket. And we were just seeing like the crowd getting like closer and like pushing closer and closer in. Wow. And it wasn't until I want to say like right before Drake had came in where he was um he had did like the unreleased song. I had recorded it and I didn't even notice that the girl in my video was a girl who was yelling at the cameraman to stop the oh. show. Like I didn't even notice like I was that close to everything that was happening. Whoa. And I kind of had an idea of what was going on when I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> when they had they were yelling for people to like clear the way, right? Like I was I was hearing the screams before they had got to me and they were like, move, 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 move. And so when it came to me, like we all made a path and I see this kid. And he is, he, I don't, he was just, possessed. he was just so gray. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say possessed. <laughs> he was just so, so gray. Gray. Yeah. 
he was like, so gray. Like he was dying. Yeah. Oh. And like I remember seeing the looks of like his friends' faces. Oh. And my husband wasn't paying attention because he was like too busy trying to monitor the crowd. Oh and, like, god. I seen like his friends' faces and like that's when I kinda I started shaking. Like I don't know why. Like I didn't I I was just shaking. I was you know. so scared at that point. You felt and like it. my husband felt it and he was he looked at me and like I was just so scared because the looks on their faces, it was just and right after they had gotten out, we just seen like a, a like influx of people coming out and the looks of their eyes. Like one kid came out and like he put his hand like on his forehead and like his eyes were so wide. And then we had another guy like come out and he had FaceTimed his mom. He FaceTimed his mom and he was just like, mom, you wouldn't believe what just happened. And like, he looked so scared. And like this one girl had, was just, she had bumped me and I looked at her and she just kept running. Like she, she didn't even care that she was like in a pocket. She just like kept running until like, I felt like she couldn't run no more. Wow. Wow. And so, yeah, it it was getting crazy. Like was that's it hard when to I knew. breathe? Like they said, was it like a? There was one report of someone saying they were so squished that they looked around and everyone was gasping for air. Yeah. Um. Like I said, like where we were, we kind of had like a little pocket area where we could breathe. But like I said, the closer you got, when you're close to all those people and you're in trap, you can't breathe. You can't. And right. everybody's squishing on you. You. There's no way. There's no, like, you have to go into survival mode in order for you to get a good batch of air. Wow. And, like, I said, the way that that stage was set up, there was, the only way was to get out of that whole area was probably to back out. And that was damn near impossible. Exactly. They shouldn't have had that set, set up like that. They should not. Yeah. Because yeah. it was just the way that that, like, the whole thing was shoddy to begin with and like i said i was talking to a carnival worker and she was saying that while she was tending the booth because you know they still have to be there no matter who's playing mm -hmm. she was by the medical tent where the vip was and she was just seeing them like put the bodies down and running back in and put the body like not even checking the pulses oh my not God. even like rendering a like they were just going like dropping them running back in dropping them running back in <gasps> so now that corroborates a lot. So uh, uh, Tabitha, I'm not sure if you saw Madeline Eskin's uh, yeah. testimony. Her yes. account, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I don't think the EMT was trained because I'm. Yeah. I think in her her post, she said there was only like one ombu bag and like one AED, and nobody knew yeah. what to do. Like I said, like they just hired anybody for this event, like. Or people who, like I said, were not trained to handle such a big crowd. So, and I know so um, a friend of mine. She was saying that a nurse who had attended was doing CPR in her section, and she was just a couple of feet in front of me. And he was just attending the concert, and he was administering CPR to multiple people. And she had seen them put someone on a stretcher. I mean, on a, what's it, I guess it's a stretcher, but you have to carry it. It doesn't have wheels. And they didn't know what side to put her on. And they put her on, her head was like on the more narrow part where your feet's supposed to go. Yeah. And when they were carrying her out, she fell flat on her face. I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. And yeah. she witnessed that firsthand. Damn, Tabitha. You went through some shit. How are you dealing with it? Like, how did you leave? How did you end up getting out and what was it like getting out of there and, and then decompressing? Yeah. Well, I know he cut his set early. I think that's what people are saying that like he cut it early. And cause he did like cut the show, like a couple of songs after Drake, but he had said it, um, that this was going to be his final song. And he, before he left, he had like, before he started the song, he had told people in the crowd, he was like, take care of one another, you know, mind your neighbors and like cherish life. And me and my husband looked at each other and we're like, okay, we got to go because well, if we don't go now, cause there's only one entrance and one exit in the festival 
I was like, if we don't go now, we're going to get stuck. So before we left, before he could finish or start that song. And when we left, we noticed other people were leaving. And we were behind, we were in front of this girl and she was like, she was having a full blown panic attack. And she was saying that she was like in the pit and she was just like, she couldn't even believe that she got out of there. And I know by the time that we got to our car, they were saying that um, people were stuck on the stairway to get out into the parking lot and fights were breaking out. And, you know, people were just pushing other people. Like I said, it was getting rowdy from, from, I guess, the end of the concert. Now everybody's, like, wanting to leave and they're aggressive because of everything that was going on. So, like, fights were breaking out in the stairway. And, like I said, the security by the end of the night had, like, diminished greatly in size. So there isn't really anybody to control this. I know they said that's when they dispatched HPD on the scene. I know they were in the parking lot. And like when I got home, I started like shaking again. And it's like, you're when you're at a concert, you don't think anybody's gonna die. You know, you're just making that assumption that you're gonna be safe. Yeah. So how was I supposed to know that that person that was carted next to me passed away? Like, how was I supposed to know? So like, when I had just, seeing that it was more than just one, like when it was like a whole sh- thing, like eight people plus kids, kids being hurt, kids like hanging on on a thread. It's been hard. Cause like, those are, those are kids, you know, they're not yeah. gonna go home. The holidays are starting. Like those are kids. And it's just like, how can you, I just, it's just so hard to like, like I said, I've been having nightmares about it every single night. Yeah. Damn it. And it's like, when I do sleep, because I can't sleep. And it's like, I'm a mom. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, looking at it in a mom's point of view. And I was telling my husband, like, that kid that passed by me, like, that's, that's somebody's baby. Yeah. Like, that's somebody's child. Right, right, so so and like you, you send them to these things to have fun, and you expect that people are gonna keep them safe, and you expect that people are gonna follow like a certain guideline, or at least like have the security to enforce those certain guidelines. You don't think that they're not gonna come home, you know? Right, you you don't think that. Right, right. So like, that's hard. That is is. And it's like, if I feel like this too, and I was telling other people, it's like, I kind of have like this survivor's guilt, you know? Like I had somewhat of like a great day all the way leading up to that. And it's like, how can I even have that? You know what I mean? Like how, in a way, like how dare I have that? When people can't even like, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. Take your time. Yeah. And it's like I said, like, I'm more really, I'm really, really mad at, like, the organizers that put the show on. I'm mad at Live Nation. I'm mad at the venue because it's like, y'all cut corners, and I've seen it. I've seen it firsthand. Y'all half asked this whole show this could have all been prevented and it's like for what like for what Mm. wow tabitha with your experience and what you saw and i mean just immediate to you you know you were you've yourself witnessed the tragedy and with the mismanagement of the staff and their inexperience would you say that from what you saw that the media is being truthful about the eight eight person death toll at this very moment or do you think just in your gut or just no, in your I, intuition I think there's way more than just eight okay. there has to be there yeah. has to be because like i said like there's accounts from people i know yeah and there's accounts from people that i've made friends with at the festival is- where 
that I know there has to be more than just eight. Is there any kind of story um, uh, with between you and all the folks that you know that were there? Is there is there anybody giving credence to this story about this this syringe jabber guy who's dosing people up? No, I didn't see anything like that when I was there or when I left. I haven't, from the people that I've known that were in the pit, nobody said that. And, like, also, too, like, there's videos of every point. Like, everybody had their phone out. Yeah. Everybody had their phone out. There's multiple videos out there. I have have I have videos in my phone. So I know if I was recording, and like I said, everybody was recording. I don't know if you've seen the Apple Music. A uh, stream. Oh, Everybody yeah. had their phone out. Everybody mm -hmm. was making TikTok, Snapchats, taking personal videos. If there is something like that going on, why wasn't it recorded? Yeah. Ooh. Like, why wasn't it caught? Right. And like I said, I have, I know a lot of people who are in the pit who are like damn near like by the stage and they didn't say they seen, like, I, they seen people using like their cactus. They were like um, the aluminum cans as knives and stuff. Yeah. And like people throwing piss bottles. Like I've heard those accounts and like people throwing like metal and stuff and like jacking people. But I, I didn't hear nobody tell me about the syringes. And like I said, I didn't see no videos on it. Now, I can't speak for that security guard who did say he got jabbed because he could have. Right. So we just don't know. Right. But as like a mass crazy person who was just doing it to multiple people, I feel like the video would have gotten out now because like almost every point of view is on TikTok or Instagram or Facebook. And like I said, I, no one hasn't really said anything about that. Wow. This is gnarly. This is I mean, I, I, your perspective has been very enriching for us and, you know, uh, I, for one, you know, I, I did make a thread on on Twitter that went a little bit viral because, you know, that was something that I suspected. And as somebody who didn't attend, if you can just see through through some content that there are gray people on the floor, that there are people that need some sort of CPR, then, you know, context clues will tell you that, hey, this looks like a lot more than just, you know, just... Mm -hmm eight people and that's the thing that just really befuddles me is you know why is it that they're withholding this you would think that by now and also you know i believe that it was axel's dad he was one of the ones that actually uh one of the young men that passed away from this incident or this tragedy rather his dad was i think uh, on fox 26 he was arguing that at one point his his son wasn't accounted for in one of the the deceased eventually he made made it but it makes me wonder why more people won't step forward you know because mm -hmm. obviously this just seems so much of a ratio eight out of fifty thousand people and and then with all the content that's out there showing what we've seen you know mm -hmm. i think that's where the reason why i i get so hung up on that is because that is where people go into conspiracies because it's like well, where is some sort of balance here, media? Like, give us the, the death toll. Give us how many cardiac arrests happened, you know? Like, mm -hmm. let's be transparent about what actually happened, and it's just not. Yeah, because I know um, there's this guy on Instagram. He was one of the first people to even break the news that people had died. He, uh, he was a photographer. Well, he is a photographer. And he, he had posted on his Instagram story that he asked a, a lawyer, he was like, do you think that it was just eight? And the lawyer said, absolutely not. Oh, that, yeah. that either Live Nation is covering their ass, NRG is covering their ass, or maybe it's the family that wants to, you know, just keep away from like all the scrutiny in the media. Yeah. But he was like, for eight being eight, there's, there's no way. There's no way that there's eight. And like I said, from like, the gross negligence and like the accounts from like I said the carnival worker who was just seeing people just being dropped and like going back in the crowd and like how many people do we know are truly injured and like you said like how many people truly did pass and right. like I know you said about the um how Axel Acosta's father was saying that they didn't even count him 
yeah. when he called NRG, when he was calling around, they were saying that his son wasn't even there. When he was calling the reunification center, I know they, they told him that his son wasn't there. And it's like he, he had to physically come down to even find his son because nobody could pinpoint where he was. Wow. Yeah. And see, that that's exactly what I mean. And th this absolutely angers me. And, you know, this is what, in my opinion, you know, this is what keeps this is, you know, a more contextual conversation. But this is what has created this sort of division in the nation is, you know, just the, the media not being accountable, not being truthful to what actually transpired. And, you know, if, if, we weren't put up against each other to have our own, you know, sort of ideas about what happened and, you know, uh, what transpired because there's, there's not that information available to us. You know, I think that, you know, a lot of problems would be solved, but, you know, unfortunately, you know, again, you know, this is, this is absolutely uh, on the part of the media and, you know, even the law, it's not all their fault. It's not all of law enforcement's fault, but obviously there's something that's being withheld. There were um, accounts that actually, you know, uh, so, some medical professionals that have uh, re see, they have uh, indiscretion come out and said, hey, look, I'm an ER nurse here. And, you know, I, I had like 12 kids that came in with cardiac arrest and, you know, some mm. perished. But see, that's the thing, too. It makes me confused. Like, is there some sort of like is there like a gag order or something like where they, are they being ordered from the top down within the medical system to not say anything? You know, there's, there's more questions that more questions and answers that come out of this. Yeah. Cause I don't think it's necessarily like the, like the medical side that is trying to, I think it's really the promoters and everybody who put on this festival and even HPD trying to cover their ass because yeah. I know HPD said that they had met with Travis the Friday previously saying that they had concerns, but if they had concerns, why weren't they on the scene instead of a third party? Right. And the people that were on the scenes, they seen, like I said, the how rough the crowd was all day. I have video of like the cops looking at them straight up, throwing the world around and they didn't do nothing. This is so, so resemblant of when I was at the Capitol on the 6th. Because initially there were almost they looked like um like uh, rent cops that were there. Mm -hmm. They looked so young and afraid that they couldn't actually do anything. And then eventually, when they needed real backup, they called in Virginia's um, uh, cops. I guess there were more SWAT who came and helped. But in this situation, it doesn't look like anybody was qualified at this concert to do anything. No. Cause like, I, I don't even know if like y'all been on TikTok and there's like an, an account from one security guard where she just straight up said like, they're just picking people off the street where she, they were like, do you want to be a security guard? <gasps> yeah. Like she's Get on this vest. Get the fuck out. Are you serious? What? What are and they doing she, that for? This is crazy. Like, and she said too, that she thought that she was going to be checking bags cause she was real small. And instead, they put her to handle the crowd. And she was like, how the hell am I going to handle this crowd? Like, just me and you. And she said even to her supervisor that she was walking with all day, he wasn't even minding the crowd. He was too busy trying to mingle with, like, the attendees. He was flirty. He wasn't even paying attention to anything. And she uh -huh. said that some of the security guards who were hired for the event, they were taking off their vests and just blending in with the crowd because you know it's a free concert at that point so like i said there's gross negligence real like all around this could have been prevented had they hired the real deal but they chose to cut corners they chose to be cheap and obviously things happen the way they did uh yeah it's it's to some, it is a coincidence how dark and hell like it looked like and probably felt like. Um, and you know, this isn't like a country concert. Like, well, well I mean, we've seen one where there was a, a mass shooting, but it's not like this was um, the vibe of the music. Absolutely seems to have matched what happened. Yeah, and like I feel like that's just truly a coincidence because that's been Travis Scott's like whole aesthetic since he first got on the scene. You know, like, like I said, this isn't his first Astroworld. 
And like, if anything, last Asteroid was like a little bit more dark Ooh. than this one. Like um, theme wise, this one was Ooh. more like vibrant in a way. Like it was, it looked like there was like a lot more money put into the stage because obviously the money wasn't put into the security or EMT. So compared to the last time, they downgraded with security and everything? No, I would say they, yeah, they kind of downgraded, but even like from the other ones, like they sucked because people were always able to break in and always able to get away with stuff. Wow. And like, but it's just, they should have, the other ones were smaller. They were significantly smaller in size uh. and like um, people wise. So them seeing that it obviously it was the first two day concert. There was a lot of hype around this one. Like he did a whole week. It was called Asha Week leading up to this to kind of build up the hype. Like I said, Apple Music was in the building. Sneakers, Nikes was in the building. Like there was a lot more brand deals, like big names there. Like Levi's was there and everything. So I feel like because of how big and the hype around it, there is going to be more people, obviously, but they kept the security the same, like crappy, and they should have upgraded it. But instead, they, like I said, if anything, they're trying to be cheap. And like you said, they downgraded. They did. They, they're just hiring anybody. This is impressive. This is the most I've heard about this situation. You are uh, right me there. too, Tabitha. You have been like very enriching. I mean, the, like. I, like I keep repeating, you know, we're not getting this information from the media, you know, Houston Chronicle, Fox 26, ABC yeah, 13. No one's, no one's talking about the negligence on the production or like, like I said, like on the management side, everybody's like just trying to, I feel like in a way, like crucify Travis Scott, like as a whole, but it goes deeper than that. Like it's his whole management team. It's Live Nation. It's NRG. Like there was like a whole thing around this to be blamed. Like the blame shouldn't just fall on one person. Like obviously he's at fault, but there's yeah. more people that we should be blaming too. Like it, this wasn't just an isolate, isolated incident that happened at the end of the night. This was something that was boiling from 7 a.m. when they broke the gates to where they broke the gates again at 3 p.m. to where people were fighting all day. And obviously they weren't getting control because they were fighting the security guards they were jumping people like, like I said, it's just negligent all around. And like I said, y'all, y'all are saying that we have water stations because obviously it's a festival. People are going to do stuff. Yeah. So that way they could at least stay hydrated. None of them are working. Y'all don't even have restrooms, enough restrooms for people. The restrooms that y'all had, y'all put them like by the thrill station, the thrill stage. So people are jumping on it. People are breaking it. They have no idea there's another set on the other side because people didn't get maps like it's just a whole thing that was going on it was negligent from the start i don't even know why this was even green lit lighted you know like why didn't nobody go through everything that was supposed to happen and been like okay well here's a loophole or here's where we could do better because like it was doomed from the start it was so doomed from the start right Tell me about, you might have brought this up. Someone is also bringing this up in the questions. The 30-minute countdown? What's that? Oh, well, like I said, um, he had came on late because Met Metro Booming had to bring people back to the thrill stage. But once Metro Booming was done with his, like I think it was like a 10-minute set, right before Travis came on, he did like a 30-minute countdown. And I guess they're trying to refer to like the ominous music that was playing. What was that like? It was creepy. I'm not gonna lie. It was creepy, really? but it was like Mike Dean synthesizers. It was like from his, his like his beats, and it wasn't just playing in the 30 minutes. It was playing all day. Oh, like it, was, it was playing since we got there at 10 when we were walking across. Oh, to go to the other merch line and i remember telling my husband all day i was like this music is kind of creepy and i was like i who was like how crazy is it to think that that music was kind of like foretelling of what was gonna go down that's uh, what we're saying though <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
That's what we're saying. Like, and like, you're not the only one who said that was creepy. Yesterday, there were two witness concert goers that were both like not related. One was from another, I believe, another city or another state. And he was like, no, this was like, this, this was weird. Like, it, it, it yeah. was just really weird. He was like, I don't know if this is what sent the crowd into. And he was even theorizing himself. He was there. He was like, I don't know if this was sending the attendees into this weird behavior but like it was just it just felt weird that's weird what he said. yeah like i kind of feel i don't think it was like intentional i think it was just like for his aesthetic like i said like he has like this weird aesthetic to begin with mm. but like i said a lot of people there were on drugs they're high as hell you mix this with that music a lot of people are gonna have a bad trip because that music was so creepy and as the day progressed, the louder it got. Oh I remember, my like, gosh. This when is I was at the Roddy Rich um, performance, I was not even like that close to the back. And uh, my mind was like fighting that music and his set because of how loud it was. And so I was thinking, like, imagine the people who are like straight up out of their mind right now and they're waiting for Travis to come on and this is all they're hearing for hours on end. Wow, that'll do it, especially if you're intoxicated. The power yeah. of frequency is massive, you know, like 432 hertz. I'm, I'm a musician and a lot of my albums are in 432 hertz because it's a, it's the more natural frequency that mm -hmm. uh, allows for an, for some an open heartedness. And there's, there's uh, they changed the, the natural hertz to something that was more dissonant to what we, were naturally, uh, I guess, I'm not supposed to hear, but just it created dissonance. And so a lot of the music we hear today is not in 432 hertz, and it creates most people don't know uh, mm -hmm. a dissonance within us. So if you're if you're intoxicated as well, music has the power to influence in positive. You know, when you hear your favorite song, you feel fucking mm -hmm. amazing. And then if you hear something that like demonic or dark, it's going to set a tone and could even. Yeah. And like it really did set the tone for like the whole day because I mean, I understand they were playing the speaker. So that way when Travis came on, obviously they turned the volume all the way up. So that way at least they're playing it throughout the day. So it wouldn't bust out the speakers. But out of all the music, you chose this kind of music. Right. Like it's it's setting the tone for the festival. And like I said, it was so creepy to hear. It was so, so creepy. And like it would ch like I said, it would change throughout the day, but it would get creepier as the day progressed and louder. You know, so wild. It's almost like those who want to make sense of this could go down the conspiracy route. But then also you can look at it in a way of uh, Travis is obsessed with this kind of thing, right? Yeah, maybe, maybe he doesn't know the power of what this kind of uh, aesthetic can do, and uh, maybe he's realizing, uh oh, you know, when you start praising all this dark demonic stuff on your shirts and your your record cover art, I mean, maybe it has a result, and maybe he's gonna switch it up, and maybe not. Maybe he's gonna keep at it, but it's just uh, everyone just wants to make sense out of this of whole thing. Happened. Yeah. Yeah. But like, yeah. I truly do believe like it was just a coincidence, like the whole Sia on the other side that he had displayed on his shirts and like on the main stage, it's just his aesthetic because like I said, when it comes down to it, it was just piss poor management. It was piss poor management all around. I think we can all agree with that for sure, for sure. And you know, they're definite, again, you, you uh, mentioned it, Tabitha, that, that one lawyer, who mentioned, uh, no, you know, there's NDA disclosures, but, you know, rest assured there are people, there are cases that are coming through. I think, you know, uh, Live Nation, everybody, you know, who's involved, the organizers, they're trying to keep their asses from getting roasted with all these lawsuits. But unfortunately, that's not going to help because I, I've already had, you know, lawyers outreach to me, even through just my platform, like, hey, if you have anybody who wants to you know, uh, who, who got hurt, you know, please, please send them our way, you know, because we're opening up lawsuits. So mm -hmm. I really think that this is, I mean, I, and honestly, to, to, to be honest with you, I hope that this, this evidence probe uh, introducing all this evidence and all this discovery, I really hope that it paints a better picture for everybody to understand. Cause we're just so clouded right now and muddy with no, the nothing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Because, like I said, not a lot of people in the media, they're not really, like, explaining everything that went on. Like, it was just the way, like I said, the negligence Mm -hmm. that we've seen. It's just, how, like I said earlier, like, how was this festival even able to go on? Right. It was, it's crazy. It's just crazy to me. Yeah. I remember watching that video of there's a, a man who appears to be uh, passed out. He could actually be on his way to death or dead. And Travis is looking down and doing this auto tune uh, weird thingy. Uh, and it was almost like he was registering or just almost in a hypnotic daze himself at, at looking at this kid. It was well, just before that. I feel like that clip was kind of taken out of context because it had like cut off before. Because also, too, um, the way that the crowd was, he had to start humming, or if not, a riot would have started, like, busted out. Really? Because before that, he, like, seconds before that, he had said, hey, 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 hold on, she's passing out, she's passing away right here, she's passing away. And he had told security to get in and to grab her and to, like, take her out. And he was like, stay with her. And then he had, I guess... He was seeing how rowdy the the crowd was getting because he the music had stopped. He wasn't singing. Everybody was kind of like wondering what was going on. And like I said, he it, a riot would have started for sure, a hundred percent. If he would have just stopped like abruptly, I truly believe that a riot would have gone on, and I pro- probably wouldn't have made it. Like from where I was, I probably would not have made it. You're right. You bring up a good point. That if they had stopped it, everyone was hyped for this. And also, I want to add, two weeks prior, Playboy Cardi was at the same arena. He was at the NRG, but he had canceled, like, I think right before he was supposed to go on, and a riot had started. So, with that kind of information, why wasn't NRG more prepared for a crowd, (gasps) the same kind of fan base, but for a larger crowd? That's a good point. That's a real good point. So dark. Wow. I mean, this, I tell you, that feel like this goes all the way up, all the way up the NRG. I mean, there there has to be some, uh uh-oh. Does she dip? Did her phone die? Maybe. Yeah, it was an abrupt, maybe her phone died. Yo, that testimony, oh, there she is. There you go. You're back. Holla. Oh, sorry. That's, That's okay. okay. Wow. But yeah, like I said, it was just negligence all around. Mm-hmm. Wow. Someone just pointed out that there are eight flames in this backdrop. Eight flames for eight deaths. This is the mind that, you know, humans like to try and make sense of things and you could absolutely be right with that observation. I don't know about this number eight. It seems like everyone is disagreeing that there was an eight. So it's just so it's just so weird when the media doesn't tie tie into the viewer experience, the actual person there. Yeah. Actually, I think I think it's actually you know again it's a unifying thing to me because it's like you know everybody even you know. I, I like this conversation because I, I think that this brings out a lot of, you know, different mindsets because there are the conspiratorial, there are people trying to make sense of it. And then there are, uh, you know, people who are just like, yo, it was literally like people, people got, you know, got whatever at the concert. But it's like, I think at one point we all agree there's something that's just not being shared at one point. There's just uh, details that are being left out. And I think that's a unifying point for us because it's like, okay, well, how do we get to this answer? And how do we get these answers out of these officials or these higher ups? Because that's what I was uh, I was saying right before um, you, you get dropped off, uh, Tabitha, is like, I feel like, you know, these lawsuits, I, I feel like they will go all the way up, you know, and, and there, there has to be some sort of liability somewhere where it just failed, yeah like for sure i just hope that god bless the people that passed and i hope they get the justice that they deserve Mm -hmm. because like i said it was negligence and this could have all been prevented had the proper steps been taken yeah and i just hope that everybody who was there because i was telling people only really we only know how what was going on 
like yeah. there's like a special connection against the with the attendees only we could understand each other so i just hope that everybody could come together mm-hmm. and help one another mm-hmm. and like i said i hope that they're hold, held a, accountable for cutting corners yes yes big time wow what a what a testimonial you from you gave, there. You gave a great testimony, Tabitha. Thank you so much for coming on to Unravel. And, you know, Thank if you. yeah, for sure. Look, you have my contact. So if there are any other details or thing, memories that jog and you're like, hey, you know what? I remember this, you know, uh, invite me back on because this is an important detail. Please shoot over the email. Like we've been reiterating, you know, we're not getting a lot from the media and really the only way we're able to, Uh, illustrate what happened is by testimonies of you. So if you or any other attendees would, you know, be willing to give some sort of uh, a testimony and they can even come on anonymous if they want to, uh, please let them know that they're always welcome here at Unravel because we are trying to make sense of everything that's going on. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank y'all for having me. For sure. Thank you so much for your your testimony and your perspective. We yeah. appreciate it. Thanks for being here. And I hope I hope you get uh better and, and the nightmares stop and yes. the PTSD goes away because you're you experience something that not many people will ever experience in their lives. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm sorry mm-hmm. that you had to go through that and thank you for uh, letting us know everything. Yes. And thank y'all for having me. Y'all have a good one. You too. Yeah. Thank you, Tabitha. Bye. Whoa. Man, nar nar. So, what do you think? The music it ties back to that graphene oxide. I keep thinking I didn't want to bring it up to her, you know, but because uh, you know, um, but the frequency. I can't believe that's one of the most shocking things now that I'm hearing about it is they were playing that dark demonic uh, frequency the whole time since ten in the morning, and it got louder, and people got more rowdy. It's like they were testing out what they can do with frequency. That's where my mind goes. Because you could do the opposite. If you're having a bad day and you listen to some 432 hertz or whatever kind of hertz that are geared for healing and balance, you can have a really good time meditating with with some headphones and binaural beats. (laughs) But they could do the opposite. And uh, they said it sounded like heartbeats going faster and faster. Yes. Is that it? That is it. You found it. Let me see. That is it. And that is such a look. We all know that there is that word in the you know what that you put inside you. That has this in it. And if you, this is frequency here that they're running through it. You don't even have to hear it. There's no sound to it because, oh, it's drums. Wow. Ew. It's like flubber. Yeah. And if that's in you and they've got some things to activate it, you might do things you probably weren't expecting. You might lose your conscious ability. If you are on some kind of drug as well, you're probably going to be taken for a ride. Yeah. I, I gotta I gotta watch this one. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, graphene oxide reacts to phone call. That's a that's insanity. And then that's look at insanity. that insanity. What's graphene and why it'll soon take over the world? Oh Stop. my god, that's creepy. Stop. And that was what three years ago? Cheese yeah. and crackers. Cheese, Cheese and, crackers. and crackers. What the monkeys? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, play. Play for me. She's on the precipice. I feel, Miss yeah, Tabitha. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think there was some realization there. I, I definitely like how we all can have this sort of like you know right? commonality with the realization. What kind of cell phones this guy got? This guy's from like another dimension. <laughs> <laughs> what phone is that, bro? Ew! Look. Whoa. Do you know what I'm saying? And if this goes in your DNA, if it's in your, in your DNA, <laughs> DNA. Oh my gosh, it looks like a real animal, like a toupee or a wig. 
Oh Snap my God. Six. That's gross. 5G. Looks- Mixed in the 5G right there. Boom. It'll make people go cuckoo. Can you hear it? Yeah, it sounds like he's speaking some language I don't know. Oh, I can hear that. Ew. What? Yo, that looks like a wig. It's it's almost like <gasps> when Venom. The, yes, yes. And when you see the Venom posters, the billboards, it's totally Illuminati. One eye is regular. The other eye is turning into a creature. This is the same thing it looks like when they zoom up on a cell, a blood, actually, um, uh, a blood cell with a, with a really powerful mi- uh, microscope. You can then see these little black mothership looking like creatures that are within the the thing you put in you. And it looks like that. Yo, uh, uh, I've got, uh. This, is, this is graphene oxide, folks. This is a test that shows what frequency does to graphene oxide. And a lot of the concert goers now have to prove that they have this in their body. Because you can assume what that means now with the whole, oh my gosh, and that right there where it said the black goo, graphene oxide, aka black goo, aka nanotechnology, yeah. that was from a show. Um, the show is called, it was out like four or five years ago and predicts that the CDC creates this virus, right? Uh, and it, it gets leaked out in their Antarctica base. I think that's where the space is at. And everyone's like battling it. And it's a black goo type of um, virus that makes people go crazy. I mean, it's. Oh, my gosh. And this is in this. This is the show plot, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I I would love that show when I watched it like five years ago. I was in college and. and but now looking back, I'm like, oh, shit. Because we know how they do. Hollywood is casting their spells with their casts. Hollywood was used to cast spells. The original wood. Yeah, Hollywood. And it's programs. The programming. They're programming. It's that's what the Hollywood experiment was all about from the get-go when television was becoming. And so now we're all starting to wake up and go, mm-hmm. This is such a fairly new technology. And for it to get into the hands of the wrong people, they could create reality with it. And that's what they did. And now we're, we're slowly reversing it. And it's difficult because there's a lot of us who are uh, awake to it. But when yeah. you are awake to it, you realize not that many people are awake to it. And the world becomes a lot smaller. My wig is snatched, everybody. If your wig is snatched along with mine, throw the wig wig snatching hand in the in the comments. Mods, mods, put the wig snatching, put the wig snatching emoji in the comments so people know what the heck I'm talking about. My mods are. Them. They're gonna, they're gonna, sh- you know that emoji is like this now, like this. Is it like the Italian? Oh, that one. No, that one, that one's like that. Yeah, that one's like that. But there's one like this. Yeah, I see it now. There we go. If your wig is snatched, drop. A- <laughs> yeah. No, this-, this was a good one. It was a great one. I, I'm, I'm encouraged to do a Prairie Wood on Ask. No, not. I, mm, yeah, it'll tie in Astral World, but mainly Tavis, Travis uh, Scott with Tavistock. They're just too similar. You know, all these kids that are going to this concert. My mom was telling me the other day, she's a teacher. And she was she got in an argument with a, with a student because all these young kids use TikTok. And they have all these, you know, con- whatever, um, challenges. Yeah. And some of the challenges are getting really graphic violent for teachers and they're becoming yeah. almost uh you could say demonic my mom was telling me she was saying uh, all these challenges she said one of them was go make out with your friend's girlfriend or boyfriend that's one of the challenges another one is go hit a, a, a staff at your school and you gotta film this shit obviously yeah or go piss on the ground in your school's bathroom like this kind of shit this is what they're trying. This is typical of what I keep bringing up. Tavistock is hearing. They found out where all the kids hang. Make all the kids seem cooler if they give them challenges. These challenges inadvertently are not godly, and they're pr- uh, producing habits that are dark. Mm-hmm. And and the karma is just it's not going to be good karma for anyone doing these negative things. So, of course, you got this concert. Of course, you're going to be rowdy. Yeah. 
I, the reciprocity, the law of reciprocity is, you know, it's a, it's a bitch, you know, it'll come and bite you in the butt. It's insane. Yeah. Wow. Well, we Ooh. had a really fruitful, really fruitful podcast. We got a, got to know a lot about Brotonda. By the way, guys, you can always rewatch this and share this with somebody that you know, because again, this information is not being shared by the you know, the, the MSM, you know, they're not sharing this information. In fact, I think we're, uh, some of the only ones that are corroborating actually what, uh, happened at the, at the, the concert. So please be sure to share this live with somebody and, uh, drop it in your groups, drop it in your telegrams. Um, Nick, where can people find you? And of course, I'm going to add those links to my description. So it's clickable, uh, but mm -hmm. where can people find you? Y'all can find us. Everything I do now is going on to a platform called goodline.tv. And uh, very soon it's going to be almost um, exactly what you're used to when you're doing uh, video streaming online. It's going to be like Hulu. It's going to be like Netflix. And uh, right now, if you go to goodline.tv, you'll see where it's where it's at and, and you'll see where there's room for growth. But that growth is going to be Roku apps in both Apple Store and uh, Google Play. And then, uh, yeah, on there right now, there's hundreds male documentaries <clears throat> some along the the lines of spiritual health and wealth but mainly red pill so if you got any uh family or friends or you just want to surf and see all the movies i've made and a lot of other movies that have been made check it out there sounds good sounds good mm -hmm. and guys as always thank you so much for your support thank you for smashing that like button and thank you for also telling somebody about the podcast and the channel if you guys are listening to this podcast on audio form please be sure to rate it five stars whatever your platform is so that way i can get crank those ratings up and i can get up there so <laughs> you guys rock thank you so much for Tuning in to Unravel, I will catch you guys in the next cast. You guys take care, sleep well, sleep easy. Bye. Peace. Thank you so much for tuning in to Unravel with Natalie Denise. Please give this podcast five stars.